Yeah, I'd love to get your reaction and where on the um, value cycle these companies would fall right now, Volkswagen, Yahoo. Think about the, the, the amazing thing about, uh, about uh, Volkswagen right now is that you apparently, although the facts are not in yet, it looks as if you have a culture that ostensibly prided itself on excellence, prided itself on customer service, and ironically enough, prided itself on world-class engineering. But there is something in that culture that could not accommodate failure, could not accommodate admitting that the very products that they were selling to people around the world, the United States just being one of those markets, were in fact failing to do the job which they were required to do under the prevailing regulatory standards. Now there's a huge disconnect between the rhetoric of a company and the reality of the culture that, it, that, that goes right to the heart of this issue of how the Volkswagen culture accommodated itself to failure. Because failure is going to happen. It's the, it is, as I said, the default condition. It is like gravity. To deny it happens, or to deny that it's likely to happen, is to invite exactly what seems to have happened at Volkswagen, which is that it tends to get covered up. It tends to be not talked about. It tends to be not acknowledged, because people are more afraid of, of raising a flag to say, this isn't working, we can't go forward. That's corrosive. Now, Yahoo's a different situation, it seems to me. Yahoo, you could argue, is in a slow failure mode. It doesn't seem yet to be able to figure out how to make sense out of the pattern of failures that are occurring across its organization, its fundamental business model, its relationships with its customers, how it differentiates itself from among its competitors. It seems to be almost firing at so many different targets that it doesn't yet, hasn't yet figured out a coherent, compelling, uh, convincing way to recalibrate that organization not to deal with the failure that's surrounding it, but to figure out what the nuggets for a successful new strategy might be that can capture some of the earlier spirit of Yahoo, some of the experimentation that was, that was Yahoo's hallmarks early on. A good example, a good parallel with Yahoo to me is Kodak. You know, Kodak was destroyed basically by the advent of digital photography. The irony is that Kodak itself owned some of the core patents that enabled digital photography to take place today. The digital photography that our camera crew is using today was made possible in its early days by patents owned by Kodak. To make it worse, George Eastman, the guy that founded Eastman Kodak, what was his motto, what was his mission? To democratize photography. What is digital photography if not about democratizing photography? It's why all of us are now amateur photographers with our cell phones. But they could not get out of their own way, even when the signs of failure were surrounding it and ultimately sank it. Yahoo is unfortunately in that same kind of spin right now. And I hope that they can figure out how to basically learn and apply the lessons of the failures that it's experiencing to transform the company. Uh, into something that can live for another day the way companies like Nokia have done in its past.